Hello and welcome back. We have understood what is k-means clustering and uh, how to choose k. There are two approaches, the elbow curve and uh, Chilote score. Let us try to apply that on a small data set, simple data set and try to understand the concept. Once we had a you know grip, grip on the concept, right? We will go and learn more about Chilote score and then we will try to apply the k-means clustering on a big data set and try to see now how it is useful in supervised learning. The unsupervised learning technique, how we can use it in supervised learning later point in time. But now let us try to apply this onto a small data set and see how it works. So I have taken the iris data set. I hope you remember the iris data set. It is about the flowers. The virginica, versicolor and satosa, they look similar. But the sepal petal and uh, the sepal and petals length and width are different. Based on those, you know, the the uh, input parameters, the algorithm should be able to predict whether a record belongs to uh, uh, Satosa or uh, Virginica or Versicolor. So as this is, this k-means clustering is an unsupervised learning algorithm, we are going to ignore the y variable. The species variable, the column, we are going to ignore and take only input variables and try to do k-means clustering. So what are we trying to do here is, we are trying to see how many clusters the algorithm finds in the data set. In reality, there are three clusters, right? As you know, for this particular data set, we know the target variable. In real time, for uh, the clustering problems, you may not know the uh, target variable. But here, for this particular data set, we know the target variable and we know that each class is kind of a cluster or a group. There are 50 records belonging to Satosa, 50 records belonging to Versicolor, 50 records belonging to Virginica. But what I'm trying to do here is when I do k-means clustering, is it really doing the three, three clusters or more clusters? If it is doing three clusters, right, then algorithm is kind of doing whatever is it, whatever it needs to be done. Without looking at the target variable, it is able to do that, right, or not. That's what we are trying to see. Okay, I have taken a known data set and trying to do k-means clustering and see whether it is splitting the data into those number of clusters or not. That is the experiment I am trying to do. So, I have taken this and you know, as I said, in the elbow curve, right, in the elbow curve, what are we doing? We are taking two clusters, trying to calculate WCSS, three clusters, k is equal to three, calculate k is equal to four, like that. So, if you look at this code, I have taken WCSS a list, empty list, Chilote score an empty list, okay? And then in a range of 2 to 10, that means from 2 to 9 it will take, I am taking K, right? I need to choose the best K. Where, where will I choose the best K? After looking at the elbow curve. So I have taken 2 and tried to build the K-means clustering, you know, uh, take, we created an object of k-means clustering with init is equal to k-means plus plus. As you know, k-means plus plus means it intelligently chooses the cluster centroids. First one is going to be random, second one is going to be far from the first one, third one is going to be far from first and second, like that it is going to choose. And random state is equal to 42, you know that. When you choose random state, when, when you set a random state number, the random numbers generated by the algorithm are going to be consistent n number of executions, the random numbers are going to be consistent. Okay, this is, this is a, you know, this, this, you can choose any number here, but that number should be constant. Okay, so I built a class here, object here, uh, k means object, and then passed the, the iris x train only, only x data I passed, input data only I passed, no y. And then predicted, when I predict, right, what happens is, it is going to assign a cluster number to each record. There are 50 records in this uh, train data or maybe 100 records in this train data. It is going to assign one cluster number to each record. That is the k-means clustering's prediction. So when you pass n number of columns and m number of rows, you will get a m sized vector. For each row, it is going to assign one cluster number, m sized vector. For first row, one cluster, second row, one cluster, like that it is going to assign, you know, 0, cluster 0, 1, 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, like that. M numbers you will get as output when you predict. So I predicted and then 
WCSS, you know, the K means that inertia underscore is nothing but within cluster sum of squares. So I am going to append that to within cluster sum of squares. So I have second, you know, two, K is equal to 2 and the corresponding WCSS CSS calculated. And silhouette score is a method which is present in the matrix. It is a, it's a kind of matrix. So silhouette score and I passed X train and predictions. The silhouette score will you know, actually try to look at uh, the data point and the cluster number and tries to calculate. We'll see how it how it does in a moment. So it needs uh, the data point, data points and the predictions. What are predictions? Cluster numbers. And it calculates scores for the, the mean of all the silhouette scores of all the data points. And I have captured that also into the list here, appended. So second k is equal to 2, I have captured WCSS, I have captured silhouette score, k is equal to 3, I have captured WCSS, silhouette score, 4, 5, like that till 9 I captured. See this here, for clusters 2, silhouette score is 0.7, cluster 3, it is reducing, right, 5, 9, 5, 3, 5, 3, 3, 8, 3, 8. So what we, ex our expectation was that when you increase number of clusters are at least at 3, you should get a, a highest uh, silhouette score. But when you looked at uh, the elbow curve, it is actually showing exactly, right? For this particular data set, elbow curve is working, silhouette score is not working. But for some other data set, right? Elbow curve will not work, silhouette score will work. That's where you need to understand both, okay? So the elbow curve, when I try to do cluster numbers on x-axis, WCSS on y-axis, I got a dip steep dip at 3 so 3 is the best uh, cluster if i when i did the learning curve for uh, the silhouette score and the number of clusters i got a meaningless uh, plot i would say no it says 2 is the best clusters maybe according to silhouette score it is the be best okay so if you you know from elbow curve we got to know that the 3 is the best k so two approaches to choose k i used both and i found one is useful Okay, because I know the you know, original data set and number of clusters I am deciding. But in real time, right, what you need to do is you need to take the K from the elbow curve and K from the silhouette score both and try to experiment with the, the other things, right? Maybe you are trying to build a uh, supervised model by appending the clusters as another column in the data set. You should do that, you know, with the three you should do that, with two you should do that. With three you should do prediction and add it to the data set. We have four columns. We add cluster numbers as fifth column. Build a model. See how it is working. And use k is equal to two and make predictions and take the clusters, add it to the data set, build a model and see how it is working. Whichever is working good, that is going to the best k. Okay, in real time. Okay, if, if, the, if there is no y variable available and there is no way to uh, test it uh, like this, right? <coughs> No, clustering is kind of a you know algorithm which is kind of immature not so mature so you can take that take either one as the best k and do whatever is needed okay so see this uh, when, I, when i took k is equal to 3 and built a model and made fit predict it actually predicted clusters see this clusters dot shape is equal to 90 because 90 records are there for each record it predicted a cluster I am looking at first hundred cluster numbers. See this? First, first record is cluster one, second record is cluster zero, like that it has said. Okay. Clusters can be visualized. Here in this particular data set, I have one, two, three, four, four columns are there, and then a cluster number is the kind of hue, right? The color. When you are doing a scatter plot, you can take X and Y as data points sorry x1 and x2 as data points and y as the color that is called a hue but here we have four columns right so we can reduce the dimensionality by applying tca or tsne tsne is another tsne is another algorithm which actually does the dimensional direction but tsne actually looks at the gaussian distribution distances between the data points and tries to reduce the dimensionality while keeping the gaussian distribution you know similar Gaussian distribution similar reduces dimensionality by keeping the Gaussian distribution similar. 
leave it. It's not a big deal. You can use the algorithm. So PC I used and I reduced the, the four column data set to two columns, right? I've reduced it. I chose the n component is equal to two and it got reduced to two columns. Then I hitch stacked the components, right? The two columns with the clusters and I visualized it. See this scatter plot with x is equal to PC1 y is equal to pc2 and c is equal to cluster what is the cluster number is the color so we have got clusters like these we can visualize even if you have thousand columns after doing clustering if you want to visualize you need to apply pcr pcne kind of dimensionality reduction technique reduce the dimensionality to two and take the cluster number as a y variable and try to do a plot like this and see you know the color as the cluster number i have taken in this particular data set, I have got three columns, PC1, PC2 and cluster because I took the original data set and fit transformed with components two. That means it extracted the variance into two columns and then I appended whatever the clusters, the numbers, you know, the cluster numbers as the target variable kind of a thing and then did a plot X1, X2 and color is the cluster or PC1, PC2 and color is the cluster. So this is how you can actually visualize or this is how you can build a, a k-means clustering algorithm and then choose k and visualize the clusters and see whether clusters have, have formed properly or not. But if you have thousand columns and you reduced it to two, right, it, you may lose some data, but you know, for at a high level view, we can do this, but this is not appropriate or exact. If you have target variable available and you can build a model afterwards and now make the model the best then it is the best way to measure whether you know k is best or not so the approaches k you know silo test score and elbow car anyway help you in deciding k you know choosing the best k in the next session we will try to understand more in detail knowledge about uh, silo test score thank you